You're watching America Trends. I'm Mary Burke Godwin. And our next guest, she's been, she's back again. She is the founder and CEO of the Workplace Reframe, which is an organizational consulting and coaching firm. She is a former team operations leader at Google, Apple, and Microsoft, best-selling author of Unstuck, a TEDx and South by Southwest speaker. And she's a podcast host of Managing Made Simple, which don't we all want that in our life? Leah Garvin, welcome back to America Trends. Thank you so much for having me back. I'm glad to see you. And God, I have so many questions for you, so let's dive in. Um, so, you know, I think you talked about this recently on your Instagram feed or a video that I saw, but you were talking about, you know, what it's like to uh, help your team when they're feeling unmotivated, when you kind of get mm -hmm. a sense of, where they're not really in on this, or you know, maybe everyone in the office is not on board with something that you started, or a project, or an event, or whatever it may be. So, what do you do when you're feeling that unmotivated spirit from your your team? Yes, I love the question, and like you say, it's something that we're seeing a lot right now. Whether you're in a big company or you're a small business owner trying to energize a team of four or five people, and I think one of the biggest strategies that we can do is to really connect the dots for people from their individual role, the tasks they're doing, their, their kind of core job responsibilities to the priorities of the company and the bigger picture. And we wanna show people that their role matters, that they're not just a cog in a machine, that their work isn't insignificant, but that it really is a crucial part in advancing the success of the company. And I think when we connect those dots for people, they, it, it fuels motivation and engagement because we see, ooh, I, I do matter. I do have a purpose here. And if we look at those, you know, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, we have to feel that our work uh, like ladders up to something, that it has right. a purpose. And I think managers can play a big role in doing that. Now, do you suggest a, an open door meeting, let's say, where you're like, hey, I sense we're not all having a good time here, so let's talk about it. Let's you know pass the baton, or let's share our grievances, or let's talk a little bit at the group level. Or would you suggest more of a one-on-one, -on -one, let me hear from you, and then kind of come back to a group and say, this is the feedback I've heard, and here are the changes we're gonna make. Or, yeah. you know, there's two different ways to do that, right? Yeah, I love that you're raising those two. I think it's probably good to start with the one-on-one -on -one first to be able to address individual concerns. Like maybe someone feels stuck because they don't quite have the skills that they thought they had to perform a task or to do their job. Maybe someone else is, is dealing with a colleague they're not really getting along with. So I think first having that one-on-one, -on -one, but I do love what you said to bring it to the group and say, here's what I've heard, here's what we're talking about, so that people see when they share feedback, it doesn't go into a void and that it's something we're gonna do something about. So I think bringing it from that one-on-one -on -one to the group gives the manager some accountability and shows the team that you're really taking this seriously and that you do want to make things better. Yeah, I think it's so important to remind everybody that we're all working towards the same goal. Like you said at yeah. the beginning is what is that goal and how everyone is working to achieve it and remind yeah. us all that we're all on the same team. Because a lot of times if there's backdoor chatter or let's say you're on Slack and there's all these sidebar conversations happening yeah. and gossip happens, to get everyone in a room together to talk about these things at the group level, you can clear up questions, right? Yeah, exactly. And like you said, with those, you know, all the asynchronous communication with virtual, with with working remotely, mm. we can forget that these are our team members, that we do have the same goal. We can kind of be operating in the silo of just like inputting things in our laptop and then going back in, in our life. And we forget that we actually do care about each other and we want to have a cohesive team. So I think the more we bring people together, you know, if you have a hybrid team or if you have folks remote, finding moments where you can come together in person, even if it's once a year or, you know, once or twice a year, that those also refuel that um, that empathy for each other, some of that community so that we can have, um, so we give people the benefit of the doubt, that we can assume better intent, that we, we you know, support each other more than just like, I'm only focused on myself, but we look at the bigger picture. Assume better intent. I love that, Leah, because I feel like we get caught in that cycle. Yeah. I don't know if it's a, a natural innate thing that we do, but to kind of assume that somebody is out to get us or whatever it is, but assuming that they didn't mean to make that mistake or they're not making that decision to get us, 
you know, and to get to the reason behind it. I think that's so, so key. And also what you said I love is uh, this remote working, because I did work at a, at a company where everyone was around the country, and once a year we would go to a destination around the country to get together. So that is a really good tip for people, right? Yeah. To get together. And like you said, it doesn't have to be every day. It doesn't have right. to be three times a week. But yeah, finding a moment is really going to help refuel that, um, that team community. Um, and so I want to talk about, too, uh, I think you talked many times on your feed about different mistakes that people can make or businesses, managers can make. Um, one of them was talking about, you know, an owner or a boss maybe making all the key decisions rather than delegating or empowering their employees to make those decisions, which probably ties into some of the unmotivated yeah. business we were just yeah. talking about. Can you talk a little bit about how to empower employees to, to make the key decisions? Yes. And, and like you called it, you know, making all of the decisions and kind of holding all the decisions in, in your area. This is also one of the signals that you're micromanaging. <laughs> like if yeah. you're wondering if you're falling into the micromanager trap, that's actually a key flag that yes, you are. Because if you feel like only you can make the decisions, or if your team members believe that you think that, like they're not feeling empowered, then it probably looks like you're, you're holding on a little too tight. And so what I encourage managers and business owners to do is to do an audit, look across all of the kinds of decisions that you have to make in a typical week, maybe in a typical month, and start to circle like what are only the ones that you can make and what are the ones, and hopefully it's most of them, that you can actually push down the organization. Because you know how we scale ourselves as leaders is by making the fewer, bigger, key strategic decisions, but but we're empowering people to feel autonomous and and to be owners of their own domains. So let's say you have a person doing like social media management. They let let them make the decisions around kind of you know what the caption should be or the hashtags, or maybe you set the vision around like you know the brand style and the gist of the content. But when you allow people to make individual decisions about the area that they're running, that's going to leave them feeling empowered. And it's going to ensure it's going to help them bring proactive ideas. Because if I feel like I can't make any decisions, then I am just looking at that list that you've already assigned me and kind of chipping away at it. I'm not going to want to do anything extra because I feel like, well, if I have an idea, then I have to go get feedback and approval and all these things. Right. You know, if, if, you, if you say, hey, this is your domain, I'm treating you like an owner, bring your ideas, I want to see you be creative, that gives us that space. And it really comes down to being able to make some of those decisions at that granular level. Yeah, we were just talking to a customer service expert on the show earlier this week. And, you know, we were talking about that kind of concept because frontline workers need to feel empowered to make decisions that can help a customer feel like you're remedying a situation. But a lot of times they'll say, oh, I don't know, I can't help you because they, they feel stuck. So, yeah. you know, I want to close with you have an ops playbook. Um, where can people get that? Yeah. So leahgarvin.com slash playbook. And this is a program where I sit down with a business owner and founder and map out really lightweight processes and tools across six different dimensions of your business. So we're talking about, you know, how to make decisions more clearly, how to set priorities, how to do onboarding, how to talk about career. And after this conversation with the business owner, I, behind the scenes, make your playbook for you. This is amazing. So, so you don't have to worry about that. And then I support you in rolling it out and implementing it on your team. Leah, you're amazing. So we can Thank find you, you at leahgarvin.com, at leah.garvin on Instagram, founder and CEO of The Workplace for Frame. Also check out her podcast, Managing Made Simple. Thank you so much, Leah, for being here. And we've got more America Trends right after this quick break.